In this presentation, we will discuss types of audit tests. Keeping the overall audit objective in mind, the overall audit objective to give an opinion on support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it the financial statements to see whether or not those financial statements are free of material misstatement as we go through the types of audit tests we're going to break down that process to specific things that we are testing we may be testing internal controls we may be testing other types of assertions and we want to make sure that as we think about these tests we are thinking about what is the thing that we are testing are we testing the internal controls are we testing specific assertions are we specific testing specific assertions related to specific type of accounts we'll get into this in more detail as we start to go through uh, each component of the audit but we want we want at this point to get an overview of the types of tests within the audit so types of audit tests, we have risk assessment procedures used to attain an understanding of the entity and its environment, including an understanding of internal controls. So when we're testing for risk assessment, risk assessment procedures, we're trying to get an understanding of the entity. We're trying to get an understanding of the internal controls. The test of controls then is going to evaluate the effectiveness of the design of the operation of internal controls really big process when we talk about large type of companies the internal controls something that we have to rely on and therefore we will be testing the controls directly one reason we do so is because testing the controls allows us to rely on the controls if the controls are strong and that allows us to do less substantive testing which should save us time if we had to do substantive testing testing the actual accounts then uh and have a high level of testing there it would take a lot more time than us to be able to determine that the level of controls are high enough that we can do less substantive testing so that's going to be one of the goals that we have then the substantive procedures will be detect material misstatement in transaction class account balance and disclose and disclosure uh, component of the financial statements and this again is usually what most people think of if you were to think of an audit and you were just going to jump in and say let's audit this thing let's take a look and make sure these financial statements are materially correct you'd probably say give me those financial statements and let's just start going right through the accounts cash accounts receivable whatnot well that's basically the substantive uh, type procedures you may do that in a small type of audit and that might be somewhat of an effective way to go but the larger the audit gets the more we have to depend on on the internal controls because taking that approach would involve of just going straight to the substantive testing testing the actual account balances is going to take too much time so just note that there's always going to be that emphasis especially here as we're emphasizing the audit of the larger type of, of businesses publicly traded companies and then once you peel that back down to smaller types of companies you would expect the internal controls to be weaker and the substantive test then to be something that you possibly have to do more of test of controls include inquiry so that's going to be the appropriate management uh, supervisor and staff personnel who are we're obviously going to be asking questions about that's going to be one of the types of tests of control as we think of the tests of control you might want to think about well how reliable are these types of things and start to think as we think of our detective type work how high on on the list of evidence are these types of things that we're looking at obviously inquiry is something that we have to do because that's going to give us an understanding but who are we inquiring on the management the supervisor and the staff and of course that's also the people that we are judging in some way or giving some type of opinion on as to whether uh, the financial statements are put together well so note that we have to depend on these things because we have to get an idea of the internal controls but in the list of evidence the inquiry as compared to like third party type of information something outside the company not prepared by management uh, would be higher on the scale so 
just note that we need to have inquiry, but of course we can't have inquiry in and of itself as usually the only type of evidence uh, for, for many types of things, especially for the, the complete audit process. Then we have inspection, inspection of documentation, reports, and electronic files because so we can actually go in and inspect we have observation of the application of specific controls so when we think about controls of course we can inspect the documentation to see if those controls are being done we can go in and observe and note controls are going to be kind of like a bureaucracy they're going to be a system of, of things that have to be done usually things that people might complain about right they're going to have more types of tests more types of separation of duty more type of documentation that has to be stamped as it goes through and approval processes happening. We can actually go through the process and see uh, whether or not and observe whether or not these things are happening because note that controls are things that uh, you could eliminate a lot of times in a particular type of transaction and it may actually speed up the transaction not having a separation of duties in other words could make it faster to complete the process however the risk would be higher that there's going to be some type of fraud or some type of problem, uh, potential problem could happen there. Therefore, we have the internal controls as the businesses get larger. So it's quite possible that the controls are set in place. Good controls are set in place. So they're all mapped out. You have a good plan of controls, but they're not implemented. They've gotten weak. People are not going uh, to the controls because they're shortcutting the controls because they don't see the purpose of the controls and we would catch that we could see that if we go through the observation and that we could clearly happen we could basically say hey these are the controls you're supposed to have this checked off by this person there's supposed to be some supervisory check and you're not doing that why and the and the explanation could be well because that takes more time <laughs> and but we have to do it because it's going to lower the risk of of problems happening so we can go through and observe that and we can have re-performance which is the application of the control by the auditor so we can actually re-perform some of uh, the controls and see if they are indeed done uh, in accordance with our re-performance. Just to double check, take a sample and re-perform and double check. A walkthrough is where we're actually going to be tracing uh, a transaction from its orientation to its inclusion in the financial statements through a combination of audit procedures like inquiry, observation, and inspection. So then we're usually going through a few different processes, following something through a few different processes and using whatever we need to use in order to follow that process from uh, the orientation to where it falls or where it uh, finally ends up on in the financial statements. So here's just some examples of test of controls examples. This is the internal control. This is the test of controls. So remember, internal controls are things like the company has some kind of bureaucracy, some kind of process that they're having in order to safeguard against problems, things like fraud, things like theft of the employee, things like misrepresentation or misreporting uh, of, of types of things. So they set up these internal controls. We want to know what those internal controls are. So we're going to ask about them and then they're going to tell us about them and they're going to try to tell us that they have good, strong internal controls because that's what we want to hear as the auditor, of course. Then we're going to go in and we're going to test the internal controls to see if not only they know what good, strong internal controls are, that they've mapped out the good, strong internal controls, but that they're actually implementing the good, strong internal controls. So we're gonna have to test the internal controls, not the account balances now. We're testing whether or not they're going through the processes, the controls, the checks and balances in their system, which we believe will heighten the ability for them to have financial statements that are not materially misstated. So we have the separation of duties between the shipping function and the order uh, entry and billing. This is a common type of internal control, separation of duties. Well, how can we check to see if there's a separation of duties between the shipping function and the order entry? Well, we could observe and evaluate whether the shipping personnel has access to the order entry and billing. So notice the shipping person shouldn't have access to the order entry and the billing. That's the separation of the two. Now, if they do, it would be easier because the shipping person could do the two jobs at the same time, possibly, and possibly save time. But the point is that you should, you, know, you want two different people to be involved in those different things so that if they wanted to have theft or some type of problem happen, they would have to collude. And therefore, uh, we, we that's how we can test basically whether or not that separation is taking place. And it's quite possible, again, that they start, that they, that they, it doesn't take place and the control isn't followed it, it could happen 
and not even that there's a fraud happening or that there's theft happening they might just say hey this control was taking too much time and we took it out and you're gonna and then of course we're gonna say well the internal control needs to be in place so that we reduce the likelihood of fraud and that's going to go towards whether or not the management is actually enforcing the internal controls that are in place uh, that they have set up in order to, to do these things so credit department personnel uh, initial sales order indicating credit approval so are they initially to indicate that there is credit approval so we can inspect uh, the sales orders for presence of initials of credit department personnel so obviously there's going to be an, an approval process they're going to stamp it off with the initials of some kind saying that there was a credit approval we can go through the sample of the sales order and see if the initials are indeed there so again we looked at the internal control process they say that they checked this to see that they had a, a process for the approval check and we go through and test the documentation to see not only that they're documenting that as an internal control but they're actually at least stamping off some of these documentations giving an indication that they're following through with that internal control billing department personnel account for the numerical sequence of the sales invoices so the sales invoices in a numerical sequence we can inquire of the billing personnel about missing sales invoice numbers and so if we inquire the billing department and they say i don't know what do you mean about invoice numbers at all or when what then that would be an indication that they don't <laughs> they're not really checking for the missing sales invoice numbers so they should have an idea of what type of invoice numbers have been misstated and, and maybe have a list of them possibly tell us about tell us about the the missing sales numbers agree sales invoice to shipping document and customer order for product types price and quantity so this is a common type of of process and cruel control we're going to have we're going to agree the sales invoice so we have the sales invoice to the shipping document that's when the shipping actually goes out and the customer order so we have three documents that we should be basically tied together and we're going to basically want to uh, agree those three documents how can we check that we can recompute in this case the information on a sample of sales invoices so these are just some tests that we can take a look at we'll take a look at more uh, types of tests in the future these are tests remember of the internal controls an example of them and then we have the uh, substantive procedures now the substantive procedures are typically what are going to happen later on in the audit because of course that happens after we test the controls and, and we'll go through this in the planning process when we discuss this more but we're going to test the controls to see if they're high or low then we're going to determine how many substantive tests we need and go through the substantive tests in as efficient a way as possible these are usually the longer tests but also the ones that are most familiar the ones that we would kind of think about again if you were just going to jump into the audit you'd probably think I'd be starting to think about substantive type testing if you were going to t try to test the accounts of the financial statements. So tests of details, tests of errors or fraud in individual transactions, account balances and disclosures. So we're just going to go right in there. We're going to give me those account balances. Give me those disclosures. Give me that general ledger. And we're going to go in and start trying to you know test these transactions. Again, publicly traded company, a lot of transactions, a lot of things to test. We would like to limit the amount of testing uh, as much as possible how do we do that we hopefully can increase uh you know the how to say the controls are high and therefore less substantive testing analytical pre procedures also substantive testing evaluate a financial information through analysis of plausible relationships among financial and non-financial data now the analytical procedures i would often think of the ana analytical procedures as the things that you can kind of do more in the office right you can basically compare the financial statements last year to this year you can see if they went up you can compare it to the to different type of industries you can see if there's substantial changes in those type of numbers so a lot of times when you think of analytical procedures you're thinking these are the auditors in their own office with the financial statement basically comparing the numbers looking for uh, changes in the ratios and whatnot so as a shortcut i would kind of think of analytical procedures as the things that the auditor could do in basically their own office as opposed to other types of tests where they would have to go out to the customers or to the client and actually start digging up invoices and whatnot and looking at uh, physical documentation possibly start counting things and, and and counting inventory and that type of stuff so analytical procedures evaluation of financial statements uh, information through analysis of plausible relationship among financial and non-financial data then we have dual purpose tests 
Uh, it often makes sense to design audit procedures to conduct both a test of controls and substantive tests of transactions simultaneously on the same document. And whenever we can do this, we're obviously very excited. This is a very exciting thing. If we can have a dual purpose test, in other words, if we could test the controls and do the substantive tests with the same procedure, we're going to try to design the audit to do that as much as possible because that will save us time. You'll recall that we're going to test the controls typically first test whether the controls are high or low and then design and think about how many substantive tests we need to do those tests usually taking more time and therefore we want to reduce how many of them there are so as we think of the tests of controls however good planners as we are of the audits we're always going to be thinking forward and say hey as we're doing these tests of controls can we also document and do some of the substantive tests at the same time considering we're digging into these particular areas of work as we think about the tests of control anytime we can do that we do do that because that of course will save time once we complete the tests of controls go to the substantive tests as we go to the substantive tests we're going to say hey we've already tested some of these a little bit because we did that during the test of controls and we documented that out that's going to save us some time save us some money and make us happy